एक मिनट हाँ मैं we can we can move live and uh, you can play our old videos available in YouTube for ten minutes we will be waiting for the guest am I audible हेलो चेक एम आई क्लियरली ऑडिबल हेलो
A uh, very good evening to all of you. On behalf of Riva Engineering College, it gives us immense pleasure to assemble all our audience under the umbrella of today's session, which is initiated by Government's Ministry of Human Resources and Development that has established IIC, Institutions Innovation Council, in college throughout India, giving us a golden opportunity to organize this impact lecture series to synthesize and motivate students and faculties to pursue innovation and startup ecosystem, but also helps in establishing strong connection with ecosystem enablers at regional and national level. Our goal is to build awareness of the broad area of opportunity available in today's Atmanirbhar Bharat to enthusiastic students and adults 
who have keen interest in entrepreneurship. Well, Warren Buffett rightly said, the investor of today does not profit from yesterday's growth. To, to stimulate the overall architecture of entrepreneurship life cycle and how students can create innovative products by undertaking relevant methods and skill sets required to become an entrepreneur and know about investment and funding. We have our today's guest, Mr. Jayshiv Natarajan, Chief Philanthropist and Director of Vivo Foundation. To guide us on the topic, angle investment, VC funding opportunity for early stage entrepreneurs. Now, I request our IIC student coordinator, Aris Agrahisal, to welcome our guest. Uh, thank you so much, Vaishnavi. And uh, before we start this session, we are uh, honored to have Mr. Jesse Natarajan sir with us today in this session as our guest speaker. Sir, we warm heartedly welcomes you in today's session on behalf of our institute, our principal Dr. B.K. Agrawal sir and our IIC president, Mr. Pankaj Shrivastu sir. Sir, unfortunately, they couldn't join this session, but I'm sure that uh, their patronage is definitely with us in this session. And uh, sir, uh, this session would be not only beneficial in terms of entrepreneurship, but I believe that it would be beneficial in terms of many human values because uh, our guest is someone who has a deep background in academics and in resource field and who is not only a professional in the entrepreneurship but also has achieved several achievements in his life so definitely it is going to be a great session for this student and uh, sir also i would like to mention one more thing sir our, when we told our uh, iic president that uh, mr jashwin atrajan from uk is uh, coming in the session as the guest speaker. So uh, he was pretty excited as uh, he has been a visiting faculty in many of the UK universities. He has uh, pre presented his research paper over the UK universities. So he was a little bit uh, seeing it as a friendly relationship between India and UK. So when we told that the sir is coming, so he was excited. But unfortunately, due to illness, he couldn't join the session. And uh, sir, I would also like to uh, tell the students who have joined this session that uh, you are the uh, first our first guest who has joined from the abroad. So it is also a, a proud thing for us and we are literally honored to have you with us. So welcome you, sir, in this session. And I hope that the session is going to be very fine for the students. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for the heartful welcome, uh, Aditya and Vaishnavi. It is my pleasure to be part of this uh, session. And uh, it is, again, my pleasure to, to address the, the younger boys and girls who are uh, keen in entrepreneurship. Many Thank times. you. Uh, now, I would request Tanish to just introduce our guest for the audience who have joined us in live stream YouTube. A very good, a very warm good evening to everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker today on this impact series to share his insights on how to angel in angel investment VC funding for early stage entrepreneurs. Mr. Jaisiv Natarajan, a chief philanthropist and director of Vivao Foundation, is a scientist by education and an entrepreneur by practice and mindset. He is the founder of Herbologica, a virus research and pharmaceutical company in the UK. He works toward active promotion and strengthening entrepreneurship in India through engagement with Startup India brand, Ital Incubation Center, Startup Incubators, and also advices across in universities. Taking not, uh, taking not much time, I would like to extend a heartiest welcome to you, sir. A very warm welcome, sir. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Tanesh, if I may. Uh, so I, I, I uh, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, you know uh, uh, very kind words. Uh, everyone, uh, I, I mean, since there are so many introductions, I would really, uh, you know, introduce myself again, but still uh, a very bit glimpse on what all I do. I run a small pharmaceutical company in the UK. We research on uh, viruses. We also research on processes and, and we do something called drug discovery, meaning we discover uh, medicines for diseases that does not have any medicines. And that's our, that's our prime focus. But otherwise, also, I'm, I'm engaged with the uh, entrepreneurship community, both within UK, uh, European Union, and uh, India as well. I, I, I engage with multiple uh, adult incubation centers in India. 
I uh, advise few universities. In fact, I'm also a startup mentor for the uh, uh, US uh, embassy. They run a program, uh, AWE for women entrepreneurs in India. I'm a startup mentor for that program as well. Which uh, so uh, I, I I wouldn't really you know drag along with the introduction. But so let's just start with focusing on you know what is entrepreneurship before we get in to or uh, delve deep into the financial requirements or uh, the financial opportunities for uh, uh, early stage startup entrepreneur so entrepreneurship when you take is is nothing but a process of creating something new now uh, when i say creating something new there are two keywords that comes to my mind one is one is something called uh, creativity and the other one is innovation creativity is nothing but you no know, creating something new and innovation is completely a, a, a little bit different from uh, uh, the the creativity uh, passage and innovation is nothing but creating something new that has a bit of a commercial value like like let's look at uh, thomas uh, edison who created the, the electric bulb is a very very good creator he created the electric bulb which is a, a very very i mean like which, which was never done before right so uh, and it's it's one of the most useful thing that we use even till now apart from creation what he also did is he joined hands with uh, jp morgan one of the uh, the largest banks in in the us uh, to uh to create a company called ge and to commercialize that and then that's when it becomes an innovation a, an innovation is nothing but a creativity which has a commercial value so when when we see entrepreneurship entrepreneurship nothing but it's a process of creating something new with a commercial value basically process of innovation and uh, along with investing the time efforts that are needed the risks that are needed and the, and to reap the benefits so thomas alva edison is is one of prime examples of a creator and an innovator and an entrepreneur uh, uh so uh given this introduction on entrepreneurship uh entrepreneurship is is a very difficult uh, in fact it is one of the most difficult things to do uh, to earn money uh if you uh, if you say so because 99% of the startups fail within 5 years of its inception many many reasons for startups to fail uh i mean well there are so many reasons for a startup to succeed as well but uh you know given the fact that you know uh, many startups fail it, it's 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 uh, definitely helpful if we can identify the reasons why a startup fails so that we can avoid those pitfalls when we uh, create our own startups some of the entrepreneurial challenges are uh, you know lack of funding specifically in india it's, it's very difficult to raise uh, you know funding in the indian market because the vcs are not so experienced as such uh, you know bro- bureaucratic hurdles like example starting and running a business can be a little difficult in you know, like registration you know complex regulations different regulations like fema uh you know rbi mandatory stuff licenses permits and things then there are uh, things like infrastructural limitations as well like a lot of power cuts in india uh, transport connectivity is either uh, good and there is a lot of traffic or the transport is connectivity is bad in in many of the cities even bangalore or delhi or uh, uh, mumbai and there is limited access to high speed internet uh, i mean high speed in the sense like uh, which is more than 100 gb per uh, uh, per per sec right or 100 mb per sec it's it's very very difficult to get so- that sort of a bandwidth in india and it's very little expensive as well uh, there is huge talent uh, shortage because of the fact that you know now only the university started focusing on entrepreneurship and not much of entrepreneurship has existed i mean even though it has existed in practice for long term uh, just now it has started penetrating into much of the universities and so the exposure level of the students graduating from university is very less when it comes to entrepreneurship and and hence you know many people are uh, finding difficult to uh, you know first learn skills that are apt for uh, a startup or or other businesses in india i mean university have started focusing on it which which is a good start i would say 
in other words market size and competition is a is a a, a huge threat because of the fact that india has a large large population even though it has a large population the only problem with the indian market is its uh, low purchasing power and and very very intense competition like you take flipkart there are many competitors snapdeal amazon uh, uh you know nike there are so many other competitors uh right so and then it becomes little difficult for you to scale uh, at at a, at a at a speed and while uh, these are the primary challenges one of the important challenges is the lack of funding basically major uh, you know startup entrepreneurs cannot get access to the the funding part when they actually need it and trust me when they actually need it none of the investor is going, going to fund them and uh, uh, so so what brazil did is around 1990s uh, they realized that startup is one of uh, the vital part for it can it's its country to grow and what they did is they, along with the prime minister uh, there was the think tank they they put together a scheme where they will uh, provide 100 million uh, real of funding to uh, startups in in brazil so they then they you know started advertising and many people have started uh, uh, you know focusing on startups they started random things uh, the government funded them about 100 million real which is yeah and 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 which is like almost equivalent to like uh, you know 100 uh, million million dollars right so uh, but the brazilian money a uh, huge amount but unfortunately within one year of the startup they started they they track the, the actual metrics on uh, what's happening with the startup ecosystem unfortunately only 1% of the startup succeeded and that was a huge blow because they couldn't understand they had so much money they invested so much money they couldn't understand what happening then uh, they uh, asked the united nation to do a bit of research on this why the the startups are failing even after you know availability of so much of funding then uh, un they did a research a extensive research book for about 18000 uh, hours and and came up with a with an interesting finding that even though the funding is huge uh, it was found that many of the startup didn't know what to do with the funding or they were either misusing the funds or they were routing the funds to the things that are not important for the startup so eventually the funds were not really con- converting into uh, you know revenues or uh, you know or boost of employment for the company then they suggested to bring in uh, industry mentors who are experienced in the brazilian industry with the with the, with with the introduction of uh, uh, brazilian mentors experienced people who are successful in running companies in brazil uh, they could you know convert the, uh, the the success rate of the startup from 1% to uh, about uh about around 18 19% if i'm not wrong right so so this this experiment is a classic example on on why funding is very important yet funding is not the only thing that is important for a startup to succeed right so so let's just not forget that uh bit you know when we when we raise the funding for your uh, company now uh we can zoom into some of the funding options that are available for an early stage entrepreneur when i say early stage entrepreneur they can be some someone uh, who are just in an ideation stage and and trust me it's very very difficult for you to raise funding if you're an if you're an early stage entrepreneur in an ideation stage if you're an experienced entrepreneur uh you know in an early early stage uh entrepreneurship say like it's your second company that you want to start up i'm i'm sure it would be much more easier for you to uh raise funding at, at in the ideation stage itself but otherwise you will have to uh you know try to put in more work try to put in a lot of uh, time in building your team you know create business plans create business pitches which are uh, essential for your startup to get funding so some of the classical uh, funding options that are available are uh, number one bootstrapping and and trust me uh, this is the best thing that's that's that you can do with a startup say your your uh, startup is completely into technology or it does not uh, really need a lot of initial investments like example you don't need a lot of infrastructure costs 
then you can definitely look into uh, bootstrapping you know by, by you know just set up teams you are in a university which is a, a great source of uh, talent you know try to get a, a good team to uh, work with you in 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 um, you know in creating your startup scaling your startup in 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 achieving the dream together right so uh, and and trust me building something together is always easier than building the same thing alone uh, so bootstrapping you know it's, it's the best way to uh, you know grow your company uh, if your startup is not so uh, uh, you know cost intensive to start right you can get a basic team and things uh, and there are very classical examples which have done a lot of bootstrapping like example zero that it's a, it's a completely bootstrap company they didn't really raise any investment as such outside uh, 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 up in the in the market either from angels or uh, from venture capital right so uh, they worked on their technology then they started selling it uh, there are uh, there are a few other companies uh, that i could uh, think of like example uh, zoho is one uh, example initially they i mean they didn't raise much of funding they they did little bit uh, but initial stages they were mostly bootstrapped uh, they did the, they created the very good technology and after creating the technology then they you know to scale up obviously a lot of funding is needed and then they started reaching out to people for uh, funding uh yeah. then apart from bootstrapping uh you know one more a uh, very good uh, funding source that i can think of which most of the indian entrepreneurs don't use is crowdfunding say you are uh, a, a a product startup which can be or a solution startup which can sell solution to like gender, general public or say a, a huge crowd in a market what you can also do is uh, uh, do a crowdfunding approach where uh, say you have something like a water purifier and that's your product and and say it's it's, it's obviously better than uh, the existing water purifiers in the market then what you can do is you can create a crowdfunding page there are many crowdfunding sites like example kickstarter which is in the us uh, i'm not sure about many options in india though but uh, there are few in india so crowdfunding what you can do is you can always go there go to the page you can create a basic summary basic idea on what your company is what your idea is you can there are multiple ways of doing crowdfunding like example you can ask people directly for money and then and for equity that's one way but uh, there are many other ways like example you say uh, we can ask people for money and then send them souvenirs like example if a, if a contributor is contributing 500 rupees you can send some gift worth 50 rupees 100 rupees to them or uh, since say example your business is uh, a water purifier uh, say if if a, a funder can give you around like say the cost of the the product would be around 10000 rupees if if the funder can give you around 10000 rupees what you can also do is instead of equity or uh, you know giving them grant you can ask them for funding the 10000 rupees and in and in turn you can um, just uh, you know give the product itself as as uh, a return right so basically it's like it it it, it gives you like uh, an option to one validate your product because they'll be a, they'll, they'll be your uh, first users also investors right and and obviously getting uh, a feedback from them would be very very useful for your company to grow crowdfunding is is i mean even though it may seem very difficult to collect money from different people there are a lot of platforms available which can make your uh, job easier and, and and the charges are very very less some platforms they charge only 2% of uh, if you if you are successful in raising the funding some platform they charge around 7% 5% depends it right? which is which is way lesser and uh, there are few other options like example uh, one of the most negotiated uh, sorry a uh, neglected option in in india is a uh, grants grants is basically free money by an organization or the government or a charity or a foundation in india there are many uh, grants available for different stages 
of the startup like example there are grants available for uh, ideation stage there are grants available for mvp stage there are grants available for uh, commercialization stage right mvp is nothing but a minimum viable proposition a proposition is something that a minimum viable idea that you are selling your your uh, customers or consumers it's it's i mean i i, I wouldn't say you should I, uh, you should not relate it to mvp Uh, p as uh, a minimum viable product because of the fact that the product keeps changing but a proposition stays the same right so yeah uh, there are uh, different uh, like uh, grant opportunities available even after the commercialization stage like example uh, you want to export your product to a different country there are uh, various grant available for that as well example india uk grant uh, Uh, if you want to set up a company in UK and you are a company in India, there are grants available for that in the UK as well. Uh, apart from that, there are like say uh, I would love to name some of the different agencies in India that uh, can uh, provide you you know valuable grant. Like example, when you take uh, the the biotechnology related startup or something related in healthcare, there is DBT. They give a lot of Department of Biotechnology. they do lot of grants through byrac an organization uh and there are the department of biotechnology right so and 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 some of the grants are like example there are grants 50 lakh rupees 10 lakh rupees there are grants by ministry of electronics specifically for companies uh who are working on um, the ministry of uh, uh on on something related to electronics or it or uh, information and communication technology there are uh, uh schemes like seeds seed support scheme if you are a part of an incubator a basic grant for uh, no equity uh say some lakh rupees 10 lakh rupees there are uh, different grants by the ministry of agriculture under rkvy raftar scheme uh, one is the the agripreneur scheme which is the basic scheme like for uh, you know company in an mvp stage and uh, uh and there is one more scheme by rkvy raftar where uh, they give around 25 lakh grant to for companies in the growth stages and there are also different grant by say by uh, you know different incubators uh, both within india and outside india and different accelerators accelerators as in like there are different kinds of accelerators like <coughs> there are different kinds of accelerators like example you know sector specific accelerators who focus on certain technologies or uh, certain sectors only or there are accelerators like example uh, which are run by bigger companies like example uh, jnj johnson and johnson there are accelerators by cisco there are accelerators by the the shipping major mayors there is an accelerator by <coughs> sorry netab there is an accelerator by flipkart to name some so uh at end of the day anyway grant money is uh free money which is given by uh, the government or an incubator or an accelerator just to boost entrepreneurship in india or outside india and uh so you should definitely look at uh, you know it's easy for you to go to startup india page and then see what are the grant opportunities available which are uh, specific to your startup to your sector and apply for that and and literally it's just free money none of them are going to charge uh, any equity none of them are asking you to pay it back it's not a loan it's a grant right so uh <clears throat> and apart from this uh, apart from the grant of crowd funding and bootstrapping there are few classical you know ways of raising investments like example angels so angels can be you know someone like uh, you know you can be your own angel in the sense like also in bootstrapper like you can invest a little bit from your own pocket or say you can ask your dad or mom or a family you know some some relative or friends to invest a little bit on in your startup to uh to make sure you have you can you know you know grow with that um i mean angels there are different sort of other angels as well apart from your uh, close family and relatives like example there are different angel networks or syndicates 
that uh, can help you in in uh, raising fundings for an early stage entrepreneurship like example uh, there is an indian angel network which is one of the largest there is uh, kalari capital uh, they also invest in early stage uh, uh, companies there are a uh, 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 few other uh, angel investment like example chennai angels hyderabad angels mumbai angels kolkata angels uh, delhi angel network which are prominent in investing in uh, startups in india Uh, there are few other syndicates like example triple x vc there is uh, 100x vc which are also well known apart from that there are also you know in tv programs like example shark tank and uh, uh, angels den which can help you in in getting angel investment from the the panel of investors that they have um then apart from the angel investment there is also loan like example the government of india has put together a, a lot of loan schemes for uh, early stage entrepreneurs both uh, for um, you know general population and specifically for women entrepreneurs like example mudra loan scheme uh, like and, and then the interest rate for these loans are way way lesser uh, uh, and most of the loan they don't really need any surety assets so basically you don't have to submit any property or any tangible assets for you to get the loan and uh, and the repayment period for uh, startup loans that are uh, floated by the government is very flexible as well like uh, so uh, if you think your startup can take up a loan and then you know uh, you know make sure it can get revenues at, within a certain period before their repayment period then i'm i'm sure loan would be a very very good option uh, for your company uh but apart from that there are a lot of uh, venture capital funding that is available for uh, early stage of entrepreneurs like example kalari capital uh, they have started investing in a lot of uh, early stage entrepreneurs and, and there are also uh say bigger family houses like example uh, i know dr gsk velu who invests into early stage companies that are you know bigger families like example uh, tatas they invest into early stage companies uh, reliance they have uh, created a, a a team to invest in early stage companies the, the mahindras they also invest in early stage companies uh there is there are few other options for uh, you know investment at a much later stage like example you know private equity investments uh, raising money through uh, money through the, the the stock market basically ipo offer i'm sure we can focus on them later once you once you grow and uh, very recently there are uh, you know a lot of celebrities who have started uh, focusing on the the angel investment side as well like example alia bhat has invested in ample startups uh, karina kapoor uh, has invested in lot of startups katrina kaif has invested in nika and few other startups uh, um, kohli has invested in uh, many of the startups so if you think that and, and in fact shilpa shetty has also invested in uh, uh, mama earth and and few other startups uh, so if you think that uh, you know say you're a you're a d2c uh, 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 startup and if you think you know bringing them on on board will will add a lot of uh, uh, you know weight to your company and your portfolio it will be very very useful if you can reach out to them for either uh, investments that is or for uh, say for uh, uh like like example you know we can also use them for marketing of uh, pr product like example shilpa shetty she got certain percentage of equity for marketing mama earth and uh, there are few other celebrities which which uh, has done that but uh, yeah so to summarize while funding is uh, you know one of the most crucial elements in success of the startup it's it's not the only one there are many other factors that contributes to the success uh, although funding remains to be uh, the top 3 in india uh, 
and uh, there are multiple funding options available you know try to try to identify the best uh, one that will uh, suit your need uh, many thanks i hope this makes sense and if you have any questions do let me know uh, yes sir i could see in youtube comment section people are very much eagerly to know about this topic and they have just messaged that it was really a informative session and all so sir i could see some questions and i will tell you so the question is what is your experience with angle investing or venture capital funding and what advice would you offer to early stage entrepreneurs looking to secure funding okay so uh, when it comes to angel or uh, vc funding i mean there are a lot of schemes uh, in uk which uh, helps an investor to invest easily in startup like example that is enterprise investment scheme which will basically take off your risks so india is yet to uh, come up with things like that but they have also created schemes like example uh, they have collaborated with sidbi to launch uh, uh sidb has done something called a fund of fund basically say a vc firm invest in uh in a startup the fund of fund will also invest in a startup just to make sure that the government also absorbs you know 50% of the risk that uh that the uh, venture partner is uh, uh uh investing into right so uh, there are schemes like this which has made uh, investment an exciting opportunity mm-hmm. in india even though not much yet uh, but i'm sure it will get better very soon uh, well as per my understanding uh, one ad- a few advices that i would uh, uh, give to early stage entrepreneurs entrepreneurs are you know, just make sure you have extensive knowledge about your uh, market research a lot about your market your uh, customers con- consumers uh, your competitors uh, get your financials right you know read extensively about the things you mentioned in your uh, pitch deck or your business plan you know just make sure you you get the valuation right for your startup and make sure you do the things yourself uh even if you say outsource some pro- some of the process to external say like a ca or a financial advisor just make sure you know every bit of uh the financial uh that goes into your financial uh sheet and apart from that that everything about your startup as well right from its inception to uh where you want to exit where you know how you will exit you know what are the sort of res- uh, returns that you are uh, looking to give it to an investor that would be uh, my my uh, advice okay sir so some more questions are there that how and uh, how do angle investors or venture capitalists evaluate potential investments and what factors do they consider when they decide whether or not to invest in this particular startup okay uh, i mean so there are two different they are two different entities the angel investors and uh, uh, vcs they have a different lookout on how they make investment like example angel investors are uh, you know very risk worthy in the sense they are happy to uh, you know take the risk that a vc will not take right because angel investors will come in a, in, in a, at a much early stage even when you are not uh, having an mvp uh when you would need funding say if you are working on a medical device you would need a lot of funding to even create your uh, first device and uh angel investors will will always come in much much early than the vc so their lookout is much different but in general um, you know some of the the things that uh, we focus on uh in, to or evaluate to uh, uh, to invest in a business is um we we see if the focus area the market uh, the competitors make sense right if the market is huge if the business is scalable at a certain point like example say say uh, you have a startup an excellent startup in uh, which is uh, scalable only to a city in india only to a single city in india it doesn't make sense 
the business cannot make a lot of money right so the a business should be able to make uh or scale uh at a faster pace to multiple places uh to multiple markets say within india outside india uh then i'm sure the 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 returns would be uh higher for me and uh and uh, some of the impact important other factors that we also consider is do we understand the business like example you are starting maybe something in healthcare and say uh if i'm not a healthcare investor i wouldn't really invest right so we don't understand the business we don't invest if we understand the business if it if it is our expertise we will definitely be interested in uh, investing then we also look at uh, you know some of the options like example uh say if the company can sustain in any of the adversities is the is the management team the core team honest is it a, is it competent enough to run the company uh, are there any plans for uh, you know in case of something like a pandemic are there any plans in place for the the company to survive uh, uh, evidence of such investments in the past like example say uh, if uh, say uh, if flipkart is raising money i will i will look at okay amazon has uh, raised this much money so so i am happy to invest in flipkart which is has a similar uh, business model and a revenue model right and uh, and one of the most important part is i would we would also look at uh, the exit options that are available to us like example say say i put in like 10 lakh rupees or 20 lakh rupees 10 crore rupees i would want to understand how i will make my money back is it through either the startup will um, you know get an ipo is the startup getting acquired is the startup getting um, or the patent uh, by the startup is getting um, you know sold to a bigger entity i would also want to know about the different exit options that are uh, available to me and say a company has a very limited exit option then it would really fall into the higher risk category which i would not be happy to invest in say if a company has a lot of exit options uh you know multiple ways to exit or make returns to me i'd be very very happy to uh invest in that okay sir so what are some common mistakes that early stage entrepreneur make when seeking angel investment or venture capital funding and how can they avoid these mistakes okay so early stage entrepreneurs i i i, I wouldn't say uh, you know they should really approach i mean i wouldn't say uh, the venture capital funding is suitable uh, as such because of the fact that uh, uh uh because of the fact that uh, uh, you know they come at a much later stage so they shouldn't really look at the vc funding as such but uh, you know uh, but uh, in uh, uh, definitely uh, angel investors uh, is a good option but otherwise also say uh, you, know, you know do not look at only uh, the equity as an as an option look at other options like example uh, the ones that we discussed like consider bootstrapping consider crowdfunding consider uh, getting grants uh, which are much more easier to get through and uh you wouldn't really lose any of the equity or even loans right all all you have to do is you have to pay back your uh, interest rate in case of loan and in, in case of a grant it's nothing basically you just submit your business plan you get a grant and then if you get a grant the government or the organization that is giving you a, you a grant will set up certain milestones for your company you'll have to achieve that then they will release the grant at stages right so 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 look beyond equity for sure uh and say you go to an uh, angel investor uh you know during the first meeting you go pitch your company and don't ask money immediately just make sure that you continue your dialogue you know after your first meeting you come back and then you share some of the things about your more things about your startup you know keep them updated uh if you achieve a milestone say you start selling to um, to market then you keep updated on what are your revenues like uh 
and and uh, just make sure you don't you know raise funds too early because like say like when you have just an idea you know investor is going to invest in and 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 trust me like like whenever you need investment and no investor is going to come to you uh, many investors will come to you only when you don't need them you tell them i don't need any investment they will be very happy to give you lots and lots of money right so so basically you create a foundation you you make sure you work on the idea you either create a process you create a technology um uh, or or a basic product an mvp product with uh, with uh, whatever funding that is available to you and then say uh, you are close to something like commercialization then i'm sure that would be the right stage to uh, you know go and raise investments um uh, and and just make sure you you uh, understand your market you understand your competitors which is very important uh you communicate effectively to your investors and to the market uh don't hide any of your weaknesses to uh your investor there is something called swot analysis wot swot analysis that uh, every startup should do uh when they are doing an investment you you show your star, swot chart to an investor and then see if they can contribute in in uh, in uh, making you strong in any of your weaknesses uh make sure you uh, uh you know you know define the milestones clearly like example say you you uh, tell them that we need this much of funding you tell them when you need that funding you know how much you need say stage 1 you may need only 10 lakh rupees stage 2 you may need 20 lakh rupees so instead of raising 1 crore as a whole uh put a go in you can raise maybe like 10 lakh at a first stage 20 lakh at the next stage it will help in uh, you know in a, uh, it will just make sure that uh, you get investments easier uh, very easily and also apart from that uh, the, the chance of you losing a lot of equity will be very less when you when you rise in stages and uh, just make sure you don't rise like too much of capital when <laughs> or very very little of capital than that is necessary for your uh, startup to grow these are uh, some of the mistakes that uh, early uh, entrepreneurs make and and they should try to avoid them <laughs> Yes, sir. I could see some more questions by the students who have keen interest in any of your entrepreneurship. So, few more questions are there. Like, what are some key metrics or indicators that early stage entrepreneur should take in order to demonstrate growth and pro- uh, progress to their potential investors? Okay, uh, you know, having a startup, it's very very important to monitor the things that are uh, working and uh, that are not. Uh, right uh, and 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 trust me it's it's a very trickiest and that natural unattractive part of uh, uh, running this startup but it, but it it's 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 definitely is very very important one like say example if we don't know where to focus our efforts uh, on and and where to stop focusing then then end of the day we'll we'll lose all the returns right uh, like even though revenue might seem as a most important measure in uh, you know measuring the growth of your company there are many other factors that can be uh, a key metric for your company growth and success and 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 uh, every business keeps evol- evolving forever and and so you so uh, the met- metrics keeps changing as well say if you're an early stage entrepreneur there will be different sort of metrics if you are a uh, Uh, a middle stage entrepreneur different set of metrics if you are an entrepreneur who is scaling up different sort of metrics right but you know in in, in general uh, some of the most used uh, you know metrics to measure the growth of a startup is say uh, customer acquisition cost how much does it cost the startup to get one customer right say example you spend on facebook you spend on social media you spend uh, 100 rupees uh, on one customer and they buy a product worth 5 rupees it's, it's 
it's definitely going to be loss making right so and that gives you a lot of insight say you spend 5 rupees on a customer uh, to get a customer and then uh, the customer buys for 50000 rupees very good profit the company can earn so uh, the customer acquisition cost is is very very important uh, in in a product or a solution related uh, company um uh, apart from that see if you have lot of i mean if you have if you have direct consumers then retention rate like example uh, say i i buy a colgate toothpaste and i'm i'm very satisfied then uh, i might buy more right and and say if i'm not satisfied then i'm i'm not going to buy more so you just have to see how many people are uh, you know happy to retain with you uh, and then apart from that say uh i i buy colgate toothpaste and and say i buy colgate toothpaste for next uh 25 years uh uh you know that's the value i'm going to create right so you you should be able to measure that value also called as a customer life, lifetime revenue and uh, that's the value that the customer is going to uh bring to your company the entire life and apart from that there are a few other terms like example uh, uh cash burn rate right? how much your company is uh, actually uh, burning cash in in uh, on employees on other resources on marketing scaling up selling logistics uh, insurance and others working capital how much working capital is there is if 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 it is the if the working capital is way too less it's difficult for your company to invest in in some other thing for your company to grow if the com- working capital is something in positive uh, digits then say if 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 some revenues is not making sense then you can uh, invest in alternative revenue streams uh, immediately to grow right and apart from that uh, say uh, there are few uh, parameters that we focus on like gross uh margin uh, operating margin net profit margin uh uh gross margin is nothing but you know the the money that is left out after uh, uh subtracting the 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 cost of the goods and operating margin is nothing but uh, the the money that is left out after uh you know reducing the the operational cost like example employee cost uh the cost of infrastructure the cost of selling marketing etc net profit is nothing but the final profit the money that is left out in your pocket after reducing all the taxes and uh, other essential stuff uh and also uh, one other important uh, parameter that we focus on is uh, the annual run rate whether we have enough funding uh flowing in even if revenue coming in for us to uh you know sustain this year next year and next to next year it's some of the key metrics that uh, uh we focus on the uh, make sure the entrepreneurs or early stage entrepreneurs grow okay sir so uh, yeah one more question uh so one uh, few months back our institute organized a pitching competition <clears throat> for the startups some sort of shark tank india and uh, after this session we communicated with the students and uh, what they told us is that they had very innovative and uh, creative ideas but one of the problems they faced was determining how much money to ask for so okay. sir i believe those students are watching this session so if you could please guide us that uh, how to determine that how much money we need for the startup okay it's, it's it's a very very uh, difficult and a tricky question uh, to answer this maybe i would say uh, i mean because of the fact that uh, you know we are not realistic always in in setting the things that are required right in identifying the things that are required for right. a company to grow uh, so say like uh, i i would i would i would suggest uh, instead of looking from down on how much funding you need next 5 years to grow uh, you look something from the top to bottom uh, 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 approach where you see basically you set a goal or on what you want to achieve you want to be 
say like a like a 10 million company or you want to be something like a you know you want to have 10000 customers first you define that goal how many you know what timeline you want to achieve that goal uh you know how you want to achieve that goal right once you have that goal you try to make sure you you break that down into multiple milestones milestone is nothing but a very short term goal like example say your bigger goal is to uh, reach out to 10000 customers in 5 years you cannot do that immediately right you cannot just go and reach out to like okay fine i'm start selling oh yeah advertise uh, i invest you know 10 crore rupees in in facebook marketing instagram marketing and then reach out to 10000 people it's, it's not going to happen right so you break the task into a, a multiple milestone you milestone like example okay so today i will uh, uh you know reach out to one customer only and and say next 5 days i'll reach out to five customers next uh, month i'll reach out to uh, say like 200 customers after 3 months i'll reach out to uh, 800 customers after after 6 months i will reach out to 1000 customers after 1 year i'll reach out to 2000 customers after 2 years i'll reach out to like 3000 customers after 4 years i will reach out to 5000 customers right just break the goal into different milestone and then and then what you have to do is you will have to identify what are resources are needed like example you know what sort of people do you need for your company to grow there for every milestone to say for today i to sell it to one customer what all i need you uh, compute a cost for that like what all resources are are needing what all materials are needing what what sort of manufacturing i have to do uh, what sort of uh, you know salaries do people take you basically put a financial figure to each and every milestone and uh, you know when you when you when you uh, just add that together i'm i'm sure you'll end up in a figure which will help you in in uh, you know in in reaching that goal and that is exactly the amount of money that you would need what okay sir so moving ahead with the question uh, we have one more question what are some of the current trends or emerging opportunities in the angel investment or venture capital funding space and how can early stage entrepreneur capitalize on these trends okay okay uh in fact we discussed this before so like example uh, there is a new trend you know apart from the technology bit where you know everyone is focusing on artificial intelligence and uh, chat gpt and other things uh, uh there are uh, you know some of the prominent trends that i personally see in the market like example there are a lot of celebrities that they have started investing in startups uh it can be uh, there very startup like example alia but very recently she invested in a startup which uh processes the 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 flower waste from temples right because because it's a belief that you should not discard uh, flower waste from temples or from your puja room in your in your dustbin or with the usual garbage right so uh there is a startup Uh, where Alia Bhatt has invested very recently, and then apart from there are a lot of other celebrities like, for example, Samantha Ruth Prabhu. She has invested in a in a startup which focuses on organics, organic food snacking options. Uh, there are a few other celebrities uh, who has invested in sporting related uh, startup, like for example, Virat Kohli has invested in few startups. There are uh, Abhishek Bachchan has invested in few startups. uh amita bachchan has invested in few startups uh katrina kaif has invested in beauty related startup like example nayika she has invested uh, shilpa shetty has invested in mama earth so this is the recent trend in the uh, movie industry we should we early entrepreneurs should definitely capitalize on that uh, because of the fact that number one they bring in lot of investments they will have a lot of money uh, they will be happy to invest and apart from that they will also be the marketing phase for your company which is a win win for your company right and uh, apart from that early uh, say for early stage entrepreneurs angel investment is 
the prime source of capital uh, it helps founders in extending their runway uh, uh, it can be like a friend or a family or relative like uh, very recently many people have started getting into angel investments around uh, if i'm not wrong as per uh, the recent figures uh, there were around 9500 investors uh, who has invested in indian startups this includes you know vc firms uh, you know investment banks accelerators government bodies and angel investors in fact 53.9% of them were about 500 Oh, sorry, five thousand one twenty of them were angel investors, which is which is huge. There is this mind shift of, like, say, a VP working in a in a in a company. He has started investing in a lot of startups. It's 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 a it has started to become a lucrative uh, investment opportunity, even though it's very risky, right? So we early early stage entrepreneurs should uh, you know bank upon. such uh, individuals like always try to get people or angel investors who will not only contribute to your uh, the the financial bit but also say someone you know try to get someone who can uh, contribute to the technology bit or they may be a marketing expert they may be someone like a, an expert in sales they can be someone an expert in logistic and try to bring those people and and they are also investments like uh, uh and uh and then in fact i mentioned the other thing as well like example most of the venture firms and uh, you know bigger firms they have started uh, investing in early stage entrepreneurs like example tata family they they have invested in a lot of uh, early stage entrepreneurs reliance has a huge team to invest in early stage entrepreneurs uh and and apart from that there are few very very few startup incubators and accelerators in india they have started investing in early stage entrepreneurs as well right so uh, uh, just make sure you uh, you 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 know you try to uh, i wouldn't say exploit as such but try to get the maximum out of uh, the investor that you choose i think most of the questions are repeated I would love to tell you, sir, that in under the guidance of our senior, we just visited the Atal Incubation Center at BHU, and it was really a very good experience. Sir, would you say something for our team? Uh, sure. Um, uh, I know that. Thank you so much for first of all putting together this event. This is definitely an essential part of uh, the curriculum. Uh, it, it gives a lot of exposure to your students and. you are doing a very good job you know bringing in uh, experts such as me and putting them in touch with uh, uh, you know you know other uh, modules as well if i'm not wrong i went through the program there are modules on uh, you know business model canvases uh, which is very very essential for uh, an early stage entrepreneur and uh, student entrepreneurship has just started blooming in india and it is very very vital in india as well for uh, uh the economy to grow and and trust me it is it is very rewarding uh, uh it's an it's an it's definitely an alternative source of employment uh, uh it gives you a lot of satisfaction end of the day once you create something right so uh you your team is enabling that which is uh definitely commendable and uh, tanish will be moving ahead with the vote of thanks please could you move ahead uh, thank you vasnavi a sincere thanks to you sir mr jashin natrajan sir for sparing time to join today's session and guiding us with your golden words also i would like to thank chief patron of this impact lecture series our principal sir dr b k agrawal sir the patron of impact lecture series Dr. Pankaj Srivastava sir the convener of the series professor Amit Shukla sir the coordinator mrs samiksha ma'am and the organizing committee that has works behind the team for conducting and organizing these lectures vaishnavi chandravanshi aditya agrahari sir vasali ma'am garima sinha ankit verma parinita singh mayank parawa swati and rishi 
a sincere thanks to you uh, to audience to to raising questions and engaging with our today's guest thank you sir thanks for joining sir could we have one snapshot so i would request the committee members to turn on their cameras and for a snapshot mayank just uh, me uh, take a snapshot and then thank you so much sir for being with thank us thank you so much thanks thanks one second it was indeed a fruitful session for the students sir we are glad that you joined us in this session as our guest of honor thank you so much sir for joining us in fact sir there were a lot of appreciations for you in the uh, youtube chat Stay section there. and it was really a very good session thank you thank you so much thank you. Next,